the retirement tax cliff. Many of you have heard of the fiscal cliff that we had to deal with about a, a year and a half ago. What many of you might not be aware of is there is also a retirement tax cliff that many of us will have to face in the coming years. And that's what I'll talk about today, the retirement tax cliff. What is it? Where did it come from? And of course, most importantly, what can we do about it to kind of avoid going over this cliff? So to start, the first thing to realize, the, the, to understand about the retirement tax, tax cliff or to understand why it happened, is to first understand where our money is when it comes to retirement. So you can see here, this is in the US, $27 trillion is in tax deferred accounts. These are the accounts that you were used to when we think of retirement account 401k, 403b, IRAs, and so forth. And only $5 trillion is in other types of accounts. So you can see the majority of this money is in what we call tax deferred accounts. So what's, what's wrong with that? What's the problem? Well, one of the problems with this type of account is, when, is the way they're taxed. Right? With these types of accounts, they have some benefits, but the one problem with them is they're taxed at the end. Um, so when, when you take this money out, 100% of the money is taxable. When you take it out, of course, that's typically in retirement. So that presents a bit of a problem, of course, tax-wise in retirement. The second one is that you're required to take money. Even if you don't want to take money out, the government will eventually force you to take money out at age seven, seven and a half, technically. So, so uh, at age seven and a half, you'll be forced to take money out, even if you don't want to. And of course, when you take that money out, uh, you'll be taxed by doing so. Could you go back one slide, please? Thanks. Um, and again, these are your typical retirement accounts. Some of them are listed down here. So. Well, if these accounts are so bad, why do people do them? Why would anyone put money in them? And, and they're actually not as bad as, as it might sound. There are some good benefits to these accounts as well. One, you get to deduct anything you put in there uh, for the most part, which is a good thing. Secondly, as that money grows, you don't have to worry about any taxes, which is also a very good thing. Uh, and then thirdly, uh, what I hear a lot from, from a lot of people is, well, in retirement, I'm going to be in a lower tax bracket. So therefore, even if my money is taxable in retirement, I'll be in a lower tax bracket, so I won't have to pay as, many tax, as much taxes. So let's explore that one a little bit. Um, next slide. Typically, we can kind of compare what, what, what are things typically before retirement compared to after retirement, especially from a tax standpoint. So one of the things to consider is uh, the deductions and exemptions that we get now. For the most part, when you're younger, the biggest three biggest deductions most people get are mortgage interest. When you have a mortgage, you have 401k or retirement plan contributions. And of course, once you have kids or dependents, then you can deduct or have them as a tax exemption as well. So these are the three main uh, ways to reduce your taxes when you're younger. When you're older, these things go away, right? Typically, you have very little or no mortgage once you're retired, so no interest to deduct. Retirement plan contributions are no more because you're no longer working, so you have no retirement plans to contribute to. And uh, hopefully, at least, your dependents are no longer in the house when you retire. <laughs> that, that, that might be up for debate. So uh, from an exemption standpoint, you can see it's actually doesn't look so good in retirement. We have less deductions, less exemptions in retirement. So one, not against taxes in retirement. The second one, we can look at is tax rates. If you look at tax rates, right now they're at historical lows. Taxes have never been this low over the past 100 years. The ordinary income tax rates, uh, qualified dividends, capital gains rate, they're all lower than they've ever been. Right? Uh, at least until about 2013, they actually jumped up a little bit for the higher income earners in, in 2013, but still we're pretty much at record lows. Uh, if we look forward, moving forward, well, it probably is not the case anymore. So if you think, if you talk to most people that uh, deal with taxes, they'll say taxes are most likely going up, uh, partly because we're at record lows, but also because if you just look at the government debt, right, we have massive uh, amounts of debt since the Great Recession in 2008, the most common way to pay off government debt is usually raising taxes. So from a tax rate standpoint, things don't look so great in retirement either, most likely higher than lower at this point. And then lastly, we can look at lifestyle in retirement. Apparently, our lifestyle when you're not retired is you, you do stuff, you, do, you live your lifestyle, right? Uh, now, 20, 30 years ago when you said the word retirement, that was, uh, the image that's conjured up was, you know, someone sort of sitting on a rocking chair on their porch, uh, sewing or knitting, drinking some iced tea, 
uh, maybe doing some gardening, and then slowly and quietly uh, disappearing into the sunset. Right? <laughs> Nowadays, retirement is completely different. Retirement is the beginning of your life. Now you get to do all the things you couldn't do when you were working. You can travel the world, you can play golf all day. Uh, my parents are the perfect example of this. They live up in Sun City in Lincoln, and they are enjoying their lives. Now when we were growing up, they didn't spend anything. They, they saved a lot of money. Uh, one example is they went to the movie, in my, in my entire childhood, they went to the movie theater once to see a movie. My entire childhood. They, I still remember it's such a big deal because it was the only time they went, they saw Fatal Attraction. <laughs> Which might be the reason they didn't see any more. <laughs> but uh, they didn't. They, anytime they watched movies, we rented it from the library, the VHS tapes, and, and they were free. And so nowadays, though, it's the opposite. They, they just saw Mission Impossible in the theater two weeks ago. Right now, they're actually in the Mediterranean doing a cruise over there. They were in Hawaii a couple months before that. They go to the East Coast every couple, every, uh, couple times a year to visit my brother and his family. So they're traveling the world. They're doing all the things that they couldn't do when they were younger. And I guarantee you they're spending a lot more money than they spent uh, when they were younger. And again, spending more money, spending more money means taking more money out of your 401k, out of your retirement account, which means paying more taxes as well. So you kind of look at all these things, taxes looks like, there's, there, there, at least there's a good argument that taxes may actually be higher uh, or at least the same in retirement. And so this is where the tax cliff comes into play. We've got a combination of all this money that's fully taxable in retirement and most likely taxes are going to be higher in retirement if you start to run into big tax problem. So what can we do about this? You know, I, I painted a very dim picture. What are the solutions? Well, one of the main ways to deal with this is to use Roth accounts. You can see here there are some uh, different accounts, Roth IRAs, Roth 401ks. Anything with Roth in front of it uh, can be a solution to this. And the reason is that money comes out of these accounts 100% tax-free. Right? So this becomes a big, uh, easy way to deal with this tax cliff problem. If money comes out tax-free, you don't care whether tax rates are higher. You don't care if your lifestyle is higher. You don't have as many deductions. It's tax-free. You don't have to care about taxes at all. Right? And so. Uh, the simplest way to really open up this type of account is to do a Roth IRA. Um, there are some limitations, though, to a Roth IRA. One is you can only put 5500 a year into it, so it does take some time to really get this thing to grow, to grow pretty large. So it, it, with Roth IRAs, the earlier you start, the better. For those of you that are interns, uh, if you can get money into a Roth IRA now, you'll be very happy many years from now as that grows and compounds. Uh, for those, uh, the other limitation of a Roth IRA is that you do have income limits, so if you make too much, you're no longer allowed to contribute to a Roth IRA. So if you make uh, over 100, 10, 120,000 individual, then you can't contribute anymore. If you make over roughly 200,000 married college jointly, you can't contribute anymore. So there are some limitations to that. Uh, one, another way to go about it is to do a Roth 401k if your employer offers it. Uh, Roth 401k is, is, has the same tax-free benefits, but with less restrictions uh, with income, and, and you can put 18000 a year in, so you can put it up much quicker. Uh, for those of you that work at HP, uh, they do offer a Roth 401k, which is available to you. Uh, and depending on your situation, there are other Roth accounts and other ways to get money in. You can do convert IRAs to Roth IRAs. You can uh, con contribute to after-tax 401ks if your company allows that, and then do a in-service distribution and convert to a Roth IRA. So things get complicated, uh, and it just kind of depends on your situation as to whether or not it's, it's easy to get money in there or perhaps a little more complex to get money in a tax-free position. But if you can, if you can get money into this tax-free position, then you really alleviate a lot of the burden of taxes in retirement. So it's a, a very important thing to consider when we're talking about retirement. So uh, that being said, if you want to find out more, we have a, the, the white paper that this is loosely based off of is called Beware the Retirement Tax Cliff by an attorney here, J.P. Morgan Asset Management. Um, I've actually seen her speak at conferences and she's, she's very good. I, I'll warn you, the paper is a bit technical and uses a lot of financial jargon, so it's a little bit hard to understand. But if you want a copy of this, just let me know. I'd, I'd be happy to email it to you. Uh, and certainly, you know, this is what I do as, as a business, so if you have any questions about anything I've talked about today, feel free to ask me after after meeting as always, or shoot me an email, I'll be happy to answer your questions that I can. So, thank you very much.